Hello, dear friends. A very good morning. And may God bless all of you. And may the Spirit of the Most High God, the Holy Spirit, may He guide each of us according to His will so that He may be sanctified in our lives. By the way, I was thinking exactly about this subject. Hallowed be your name. This is the first request that Jesus tells us to ask the Father. He said, In this manner, therefore, pray. And then he says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Did you know, dear friend, that God that God saves us, He gives us the Holy Spirit, a new heart, a new spirit, which is a new mind, and the Holy Spirit, in order for Him to be sanctified in our lives here on earth. Did you know that? So, pay close attention. I know that many people love to worship God and say, Lord, I love you, I praise you, I thank you, blessed be your name. And this glorifies God, but it doesn't sanctify Him. What glorifies God are our words of worship. Lord, be glorified, sanctified. We raise our hands, we worship we sing to Him, and there are those who even dance to the Lord. However, all of these that we do in terms of worship and praise is easy. You just have to go to a church, and you have the opportunity to do so. And if there is a soothing song playing that stirs up worship and adoration, then it's even easier. The difficult part, dear friend, is to sanctify the name of our eternal Father here on earth. Because to sanctify the name of the Lord Jesus in my life is only possible when my character, my dignity, my life within a pattern that is an example and blameless. That's what sanctifies His name. And this is not only when we are in church, but 24 hours a day, every single day, for the rest of our lives. So, to sanctify the name of the Lord our God is to have a good behavior which is an example, especially, especially towards our neighbor or before our neighbor, whether a brother or a foreigner, or whether it's part of our family or a stranger, whether a brother from the church or whoever. Our obligation before our neighbor is to sanctify the name of the Lord. It's God being sanctified in our lives, His name being sanctified in our lives, in our behavior, in our blameless character, in our word of honor. You know, when we pledge our word and we are faithful to it, then God is sanctified when our behavior, our character, our Christian character is visible 
through our lives or in our lives by the unbelievers or our neighbor. You can see that God said like this, I will put my spirit within you and cause you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them which means that when we keep the word of God when we observe the word of God then we do it then we walk in righteousness we do what is correct so we have a behavior that sanctifies God's name, our Father, that sanctifies the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the one we serve and follow every day. So to sanctify God's name here on earth is a lot more difficult than to glorify Him and exalt Him and to dance in His presence and worship Him because this is simple. It's easy to do. God Himself said, These people honor Me with their lips, but their heart is far from Me, which means that it's easy to open our lips, our mouth, and praise God and etc. and say, I love you, Jesus. But the difficult part is to show such love by displaying a blameless character with our character. This is difficult and that's what God wants. Did you know that? Only the Holy Spirit is capable of giving His children and servants the dignity necessary to sanctify His name here on earth, only the Holy Spirit. And that's why we've been saying and insisting concerning the Holy Spirit, the baptism in the Holy Spirit, because you will notice in the testimonies that we are going to be posting that there, were, there are people that apparently were of God, apparently they did the will of God, but their behavior at home was a disaster. You can imagine. You can imagine what it means in the church being one person. It's holy. But outside of the church, they are a little demon. That's the reality. So, God wants to be sanctified in your life, in my life, in our lives. And this sanctification requires the sacrifice of our essence, of our being, of our will and lusts, our vanities, of our objectives, of our dreams. This requires sacrifice. To sanctify God's name on earth demands total sacrifice. It's death to the world, but life to the eternal Father. So this is the reason why, one of the reasons why many people have been believing in Jesus, prophesying His name. They know the Bible well. They know the Bible so well. Let's not say so well, but they know the Bible like Satan does. But they have a satanic behavior in their daily lives. Only in church they seem to be holy. So this doesn't count before God because what counts to him is that he wants to be sanctified in his children. Like, for example, you who are a mother, a father, what do you want from your children? What's the benefit that you want from your children? What do we want from our children, we parents? We want our children to do well in life, isn't it? We want people to look at our children and say, Oh, wow, did you see so-and-so? 
they, they are so righteous and blameless and they are very nice. Oh, really? Whose child is that? Oh, it's the child of so-and-so, Mr. So-and-so. So, Mr. So-and-so, the parents feel honored because of their children that are doing well in life. Unfortunately, this posture is seen here on earth as financial success when they get a diploma, they have a profession and this, and they conquer things here. But just for a while, and then it's over. So, the person, the person that truly wants to sanctify God's name, that wants to sanctify the name of the Lord Jesus, beyond the four walls of the church, they have to start in their own lives, in their relationship with the husband, with the wife, the children, the parents, the brothers, with their neighbor, their colleague at work, with their colleague in school, wherever they go, their behavior is the same, the character of God is there because they are full of the Holy Spirit. However, when a person doesn't have the Holy Spirit, it's impossible for them to sanctify God's name here on earth. That's it. When the person doesn't have the Holy Spirit, when they do not have the Spirit of God in them, then they do not have the conditions for themselves to sanctify His name here on earth. They can't. Dear friend, the fast of Daniel will start this Saturday at midnight, right? And for 21 days, we are going to dedicate ourselves fully, immersing ourselves in the water of the Spirit, the ocean of the Spirit the mind totally, the spirit fully, soul and body, spirit, soul and body. The spirit is the mind, our intelligence and intellect and reasoning. You put your mind to think according to the word of God. So you immerse your spirit into reading the Bible, into praying, and dedicating yourself to the Lord Jesus with your life, in praising God, not only when you are at home, and the prayer, not only when you are in church, I mean, but at home, at work, you can pray to God. You must pray to Him consistently, constantly. The Apostle Paul teaches us to pray without ceasing, at all times, if you are in spirit, you are going to be thinking of God and you are going to be worshipping Him within yourself. You don't even have to speak out for other people to hear. No, in your mind, you will already be praying, My God, be sanctified. I praise you. In your soul, you can sanctify the name of the Lord Jesus in your soul by desiring, wanting to do His will. Oh, my Father, what do you want me to do? What is your will for my life? Tell me what you want me to do. Lord, here I am. Here I am. So, you then sanctify God with your spirit, with your thoughts connected to God's thoughts. You sanctify Him in your soul by desiring to do His will in your life at all times, not your own will, but dreaming God's dreams, planning to execute the plans of God for your life. Of course, the, the body will be very glad because when our spirit, our soul is doing well, then the body will be grateful. It will go well. It will have peace and health and vigor. Therefore, dear friend, 
from this very moment already. You can do that. You can make the effort if you are sincere, if you are a sincere person and you want to receive the Holy Spirit, then make the effort. Apply yourself. Put all of your strength into receiving the Holy Spirit. And you can be certain that within these 21 days you are going to receive Him, if you are being sincere. However, if you are in sin, you are living sin, then pay attention. Jesus dealt all the sinners that went to Him with mercy and compassion, and He forgave them, healed, delivered them, and saved them because they were sincere. However, to the hypocrites, even the religious hypocrites, he condemned them and he said, Woe to you, brood of vipers! Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Woe to you! which means to the religious ones who are hypocrites, the Lord Jesus had a different judgment towards them. And to the sinners who are sincere and repentant, he had a different behavior, a different attitude. He showed his mercy and compassion. Therefore, dear friend, your life depends on that. If you want to serve God, first you have to serve in yourself by sanctifying His name in your daily conduct, running from evil, like Job did. He was a blameless man, his character righteous, correct, God-fearing, and that shunned evil, which means that the friendships that led people to evil, if you have friendships like these, run away from them in order for you to be able to sanctify the name of the Lord and be a person chosen by God. Make the effort, fight against your flesh, against your heart. Flesh, in this case, is the heart. When the Bible speaks of the flesh, when the Scriptures speak of flesh, it's speaking of the heart, the desires of the heart, the lusts of the heart, the vanities of the heart. If you want, follow the advice given by Agur, Agur asked God for two things, two things. He said, Lord, remove falsehood far from me, because he knew that when he would wake up in the morning, falsehood was already awake. So he said, remove fal falsehood far from me and lies as well. That was the first request. In the second request, give me neither poverty nor riches, because if I am rich, I might forget you. And if I am poor, then I may have to steal and offend you by doing so and insult your name. Give me my daily portion the portion allotted to me, that's all I want, so that I may follow and serve you. Therefore, dear friend, the secret of a relationship with God, it's the prayer of Agur. You know, and I also say this prayer, don't give me wealth nor poverty, because wealth I already have, far beyond what I deserved. And this wealth we've been trying to distribute to those who think 
those who want, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Anyway, we are going to end it here, and tomorrow we are going to be back. And don't forget that Saturday at midnight, we start the fast of Daniel, and you will have the opportunity to do good to the person closest to you. Okay? May God bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.